My true form has been revealed! Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Celeste. And today I have a very special video for you guys. I made fox ears. So these were really fun to make. They really just came out of nowhere. I was bored one day, like three days ago. <laughs> and then I was like, hmm, uh, I want to make something, but I don't know what. So I was kind of just like looking all around like Instagram, um, not really looking for inspo, just kind of out of boredom. And then I kind of came across these cosplay ears, animal cosplay ears. And I was like intrigued. I was like, oh, these are cute. I want some. And I've often seen a lot of cosplayers buy some really cute ears from these particular stores and shops, online shops. So I checked it out and turns out some of the ears are a little expensive, a little pricey. I mean, they're very well made. So that is a very valid reason for their price. <laughs> But I was like, hmm, am I about to drop 30 bucks on a pair of ears? Mayhaps, but it would be a lot more gratifying if I made them myself, I thought. So I did. <laughs> and they're cute. I think they're pretty realistic looking. What do you guys think? Let me know. They look pretty natural overall, I think. Yeah, they're so natural there. Finnegan Fox approved. So yeah, he thinks they're great. I think they're great. And it's actually funny, this he reminds me. One day, um, my friends and I were talking about what spirit animal we might be. And oftentimes I've gotten cat a lot. A lot of people think I'm, I guess appearance wise, I either look like a cat or act like a cat. I don't think I act like a cat. They're very, they're mischievous and I don't think I'm mischievous. I've gotten cat before, particularly by my mom who thinks I look like this one, Lucifer from Cinderella, which I don't think I look like. Lucifer. I think I'm more like the Cheshire Cat. Personality-wise, yes. Also, like, who can deny that smile? I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. So, I thought it was a cat this whole time. Turns out I'm more like a fox, because they laugh a lot. <laughs> and I tend to laugh a lot. Like, if you guys haven't realized by now, I giggle after almost every two to three sentences. I don't know why. Is it a nervous habit? I don't think it's an, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> See, I did it again. Great, awesome. Well, Fox status is confirmed, I guess. Anywho, so if you all want to learn how to make ears like these, stick around and I will show you. Let's go. So first you're gonna need some white wool. Um, my sister actually let me use some of hers. Uh, she's more of the expert in needle felting, um, but you can find this wool on Amazon, I believe, and there's plenty of colors to choose from. And I'll also be using these colors, some orange, cream, and black for more natural effect for the ears. And these are just some uh, needles that you will need to use in order to properly shape your wool and you'll just end up stabbing it like all the way through this process. <laughs> and here I also have a sponge to prevent any scratching of any other surfaces. And I think my sister actually made these weird little leather things to prevent from stabbing yourself and bleeding to death, but... Um, <laughs> And then I have some little hair clips here that I got from Target a while ago. You can find these pretty much anywhere, like even the dollar store if you're trying to save a buck or two. <laughs> um, and we will be using these to attach underneath our ears so that we can use them for both our hair and we can even stick them on hats like this one. Um, my friend actually made this for me and I think it's one of the cutest hats I have, but I wanted to like um, add some ears onto it and see how that would look. So. Because it's crocheted, the hair clips fit right through and so I can then stick my ears onto it. So now we begin the process. We're basically now just trying to um, shape a triangle, a general overall shape of a triangle, and then you're going to want to measure it to your head and just like look back and forth in a mirror just to make sure that it's the right size you want. These ears can range in size, it doesn't matter. Um, I end up making my ears slightly smaller than what I had just then, but um, it really just depends on what size you want them to be. Personalize it. All right, so now the shaping process begins and you're gonna wanna stab those needles into the wool to make sure that it is a solid triangle shape. Uh, don't worry about any visible gaps in between the wool. Uh, we're gonna end up covering that with our orange black and cream fur so this white is used basically as a base to work over
So once it's kind of even, it's looking more and more like a triangle, you wanna kind of shape it a little bit more into what an ear is going to look like. Um, whether that means like you want it, to, you want the bottom to conform to the curvature of your head a little bit better. And so as you can see, I've folded the ear in half and that is to um, sort of mend the bottom so that it has more of a curvy um, look to it, <laughs> a curved look to it rather. And um, yeah, so once it's on your head, it'll look more ear-like rather than just two triangles sticking up <laughs> from your head randomly. <laughs> And here I'm just taking my hair clip and measuring where that will sit on the bottom of my ear. You want to make sure that your ear is not too, too thin. We're going to obviously layer this a little bit more with the other colors, but uh, just make sure that it's not too paper thin or else the clip won't fit onto it. All right, and now we're on to the next ear where the same process happens once more. Okay, so now we have two lovely base ears. You might want to check and see if they're the right size for your head. I'm gonna end up making mine a little smaller because I took some measurements and I was like, these are a little too big. These are more like wolf ears. <laughs> if you're going for a wolf though, you can definitely keep them that large if you'd like or as small, it doesn't matter. Again, it's all up to you. <laughs> also notice here, I folded the inner corners of where I want the ear um, because animal ears in order to make them look a little bit more realistic that fold is usually the way to go um you can definitely add it without the fold but i thought that it would be cuter to add it um foxes have some fur sticking out from the inner corners of their ear and that's what i intended to emulate more towards the end I actually find that it helps to look at a few pictures for reference. This little guy, um, the ears actually came out pretty similar to his, so we're good. And then I continue to take a look at more photos just to get a feel for where exactly I should put the colors. I don't know, I guess I didn't realize before that they have like black fur in their ears and I thought that was really cute, it's something I didn't notice before. But um, so now I'm going in with my reddish orange wool and I'm kind of pulling that apart. Slightly thin, um, you don't want to put it too thick, otherwise you waste wool. I mean, if you like to waste wool, go ahead. I mean, it's your project, but I personally liked layering it thinly um, because once you stab it all, um, it kind of evens out and becomes more condensed looking. Alrighty, and we're done with the orange part of our ears, and so now I'm just kind of pulling out the outer hairs. That bald patch is there for a reason. Um, so with the black uh, wool, I decided not to completely cover that top part with just black. I thought it looked a little too color blocked to be natural. So I started with a thin little strip of black at the top, and then I eventually go on to ombreing it onto uh, the orange color. And to do that, I end up mixing the felts or the wools together. So I actually mixed the orangish wool with the black and it ended up working pretty okay. Um, you can definitely go in with like a paint or ink of some kind in order to paint the ombre effect instead. But I don't know why this seemed a little more convenient for me. I mean, I had the wool, so I just did it like this. I could have done it the other way. It might have made my life a little easier. But if you want to be extra fancy and make it look even more natural, <laughs> perhaps, um, you might want to go with this method. It worked pretty well for me.
All right, so now that the back of the ear is pretty much done, or at least close to done, uh, I'm going back in with the needle and folding the ear over and uh, adding the inner fur colors. You can keep the white part white, but I decided to go in with more of a cream color to give more of a realistic effect. Okay, so now we have one ear three-fourths of the way done. <laughs> I thought I was done here until I looked back at more reference pictures and was like, this needs a little bit more fur in the front, which you'll soon see towards the end of the video. And so, again, I'm just going to do the same process again with this ear, and then I will get into more of the finer details. Alrighty, so now we come to the point of the video where you decide whether or not you want to continue these ears, or if you like them as they are now. I personally thought that they were too simple to be realistic, and they still had that cartoony effect that I wasn't super fond of. And these ears were still quite a bit fuzzy, so I ended up going in with some scissors to cut the rest of the flyaways off. Okay, here was where I was definitely experimenting for the first time of like where I would put the fur in the inner corner of the ear and I cut kind of choppily. Fox ear hair is not perfect. I mean, it's adorable. It's so cute, but it definitely doesn't have that clean cut look that the wool had. I mean, it kind of had the jagged look I was going for already, but it was still quite a bit long. So here I am cutting it up a little bit again and layering it over the cream parts of the ear. And now we're adding the orange fur on top of that cream colored one. And we wanna only poke along the edge of the ear so that there's still space for you to move the furs like apart from each other like in between you'd be able to like stick your finger between the cream part and then the orange part this is really just to create more of that sense of dimension in a fox's ear And you're going to want to do the same thing for the opposite side of the ear. This time I've only added the cream color instead of the orange color um, to the outer part of the ears and I made them extend a little bit longer because I wanted to have more of that fuzzy outer effect um, that fox ears have and it looks really cute. And so for the orange part I just attach it to the back so it sort of blends into the back and it comes slightly to the front. The cream color is definitely still more prominent than the orange, but by adding the orange in the back of the ear, it creates definitely a more realistic look. And now I've just gone in with my scissors to cut off any flyaways and any little hairs that are just sticking out. This part was super satisfying. I highly recommend it. It was very therapeutic for me. And now we're done with the left ear. And that was a lot of fun to do, so now we're moving on to the very next one. And this will be the last time I repeat a process with another ear. <laughs> I mean, come on, these are just too cute to handle. <laughs> We're not quite done yet because we still need to attach the clips at the bottom, but for the most part, they're like pretty done. <laughs> they're very cute, very fuzzy, and here's the details of clips. Okie dokie, now it's time for the clips. And this part's quite simple. All you need to do is just attach some crazy glue, or attach some crazy, just put some crazy glue on the ends of the hair clips. And you wanna make sure to align those clips with the ears and make sure you know exactly where you want them to be. 
And then the rest is simple. You just stick the ear onto the crazy glue. Be careful with your fingers, kids. This stuff is no joke. <laughs> and if it helps, just press a scissor to it so that you don't risk your fingers getting stuck together. <laughs> and woohoo, they're on. And it's quite secure. These hair clips in particular were really strong, so. But the ones at the dollar store should work just fine. Again, you can get them there. You can get them anywhere. And there you have it, my friends. We have our nice, lovely ears, and now we can have a dance party with them. So that is the end of my video, guys. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. Why not? Join our little family. We're close to 200, and I'm really wanting to get to 200. So bad, hoping to make it to 1,000, but we're going little by little. <laughs> I'm trying to set smaller goals for myself, not to expect too much all at once. For now, 200 would be the ideal. I'm at 170 something, 76. Yeah, 176 uh, last I checked. Patience is key. So if you guys would be willing to help me out, that would be great. I'd appreciate it a lot. And yeah, if there's anything in particular you guys want me to make or you wanna see in the future videos, let me know. The comments are right here. <laughs> With that, I shall end this video. I hope you guys take care, stay well, stay healthy, wear a mask, and I will see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, I love you. When did this become the cat move? Is this a fox move as well? What is a fox move? Kind of, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Sure. You recording? I am. You want to say hello? I look like a hobo right now, but that's okay. Very cute hobo. <laughs> Thanks. You look very foxy. Thank you. That's the point, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What? What do you look? You, <laughs> what do you need them for? I, I was about to say. I forgot about that. I know, I never wore it and it's been in my closet for like a century. There we are. Yes! That's the ticket. I always love when people say that's the ticket. <laughs> like, ticket. <laughs> where am I going? <laughs> Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Subscribe, y'all. <laughs> Can you, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>